Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna teach you how to do a transition mask in Resolve 16. Let's get into it. Just recently, me and my friend Zach got hired on to film a private event and I got a chance to shoot a couple little pieces. I wanted to test the masking in Resolve 16 and see if I could create some cool transitions. Let's jump into Resolve and I'll show you how I created these mask transitions. You can see the video that I just showed you with all the mask transitions, everything on top of it, uh, a couple compound clips, stuff like that with some music. What we're gonna do is we're gonna erase all of this and we're gonna start with something completely new. First off, we're gonna create a new timeline. We're gonna find the clips that we like, which I have a couple of them already kind of cut in and out. So I got this kind of dolly clip right here of Zach's hands on the control board. Drop that down in our timeline. Then I've got another shot of Zach looking at the screen and I pan past his head. So I've got both clips here panning over, both going the exact same direction. Now keep in mind for the best result in a mass transition is you're going to want to shoot with that in mind. There are times that you will just have parts of footage that work perfectly for a mass transition and you didn't intend for it to be that way. But very rarely does that happen. You always want to plan out those shots specifically. First thing we're gonna do is move all the way over to the clip, find right where something starts coming in the frame right there. We're gonna lift this up the video timeline too. We're gonna drag our clip underneath and move maybe a frame or two back just so we have a little bit more. That way the clip's underneath it the whole pass through it. We're gonna jump over here to the color tab. We're gonna click on that top clip right here. We're gonna get somewhere in the middle right there is fine. Something easy that we can start masking out. We're gonna go to our window tab right here. We're gonna click on the cursor and we're just kinda gonna start drawing the shape of his hat out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Ideally, the more time you spend on it, the better it's going to be. Now you can see it didn't really do anything at all. You can invert it, you can change the direction that it's going, what mask you're doing, but most people can't figure out why the heck is it not doing what I want it to do. It's not taking anything out. So what you need to do is you need to right click underneath this clip and hit add alpha output. Grab your little blue dot, bring it down here, boom. You have to have the alpha output ready and on there, otherwise you're not gonna see anything. Then we're gonna soften this maybe 2%. Not gonna get crazy. If you if you go too much, you're gonna start to see things bleed over and then you have a problem. We're gonna go over here to the keyframes. We're gonna drop a correction and sizing down keyframe. I like starting in the middle because it's an easy point to be at. You can always go backwards and forward, but the middle just seems to be the easiest point to start at. We're gonna correct by just pulling that over so we don't see anything else. We're gonna drag over and continue to frame this thing out, making sure we don't bleed anything into the frame. I'm gonna speed up this process just so you don't have to sit through this whole thing, but basically I'm just moving a couple frames over, adjusting, going back, double checking, lather, rinse, repeat. We're gonna jump back over here to the edit tab. We're gonna pan through and we're gonna make sure that we didn't miss anything. The transition looks good. I'm not upset with it by any means, but we're gonna do a few things to spice it up a little bit more. What we're gonna do is highlight both clips, right click on it, go up to the very top to new compound clip. We're gonna set that, you can name it, we're just gonna leave it compound four right now. We're gonna right click on it again and go in the retime controls. We're gonna scrub over right to where we think it should speed up. We're gonna click on this, hit add speed point. We're gonna go over a little bit more. Right about there, probably be pretty good. We're gonna add another speed point. We're gonna change the clip to, let's just say 200. Doing a compound clip is a lot easier when you're trying to do speed ramps uh, than trying to do both clips individually. So now we can see we've got normal speed, it speeds up real fast to the other clip. The problem is, is it's really abrupt. It's not smooth. I don't like the way that it looks at all. So we're gonna right click on it again. We're gonna go the retime curve. We're gonna zoom in here one more time. On the left side, there's this little drop down bar. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna go down to the very bottom. We're gonna uncheck retime frame, which is what it was set on. And we're gonna click the one right above it, retime speed. We're gonna click on the first keyframe. We're gonna go to the top and we're gonna hit that smooth button. We're gonna go to the other one, do the exact same thing. Now, what we can do is we can pull those out and really smooth them out if we want to. That's looking 10 times better, but we're gonna do one more thing just to make it go over the top. We're gonna go back to the color tab. We're gonna find the point that our clip starts to move fast. We're gonna go over here to open effects. We're gonna grab directional blur. We're gonna drop that right on top of our clip. We're gonna find the part where we think it's starting. 
We're gonna drop that down all the way to blur strength zero, drop a keyframe, come all the way to the end of it again, drop another keyframe, and we're gonna go somewhere right in the middle. We're gonna jump the blur strength to 2.75, something like that. We're gonna go down to the border type and we're gonna hit replicate so you don't have the black coming at the top of the frame. It just looks more realistic. If the camera's moving that fast, there's going to be some kind of blur. So it kind of helps sell the effect overall. Boom, this is just the first of many Resolve 16 tutorials I'm gonna be pumping out. So if you guys are new here, think about hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. Give me a thumbs up on your way out, drop a comment below let me know what you want to see next you guys are amazing i'm the iron giant i'm out